Welcome! This tutorial will cover how to correct an elevation certificate form. It is part of a broader how-to series focusing on FEMA's elevation certificates. More specifically, how CRS would like you to complete them. For a full list of videos in this series, see the video description below. This is a companion video to the series of five videos we have that cover how to fill out all sections of the elevation certificate. It is best to view this video after you've seen the other five videos on how to fill out each section of the EC so that you have the basic understanding of what each section captures, how and why it's used, and how to make sure they are complete and correct. As a reminder from our other videos, these CRS EC training videos are primarily created for local officials who have to collect, review, and correct these forms so that they are correct for CRS purposes. Surveyors, engineers, and architects who are authorized by law to certify elevation information should also find these videos helpful. Let's continue on with the training in this video covering General Issues Part 2. In the NFIP, as mandated in the CRS, it is the community's responsibility to ensure that the certificates it maintains have been completed correctly by the surveyor. Certificates must be proofread and corrected if errors or omissions are found. Although the surveyed elevations are likely to be correct, it is not unusual for surveyors to leave some entries blank, enter the wrong firm information, or pick the wrong diagram number. Since you will inevitably run into some forms you'll have to correct, let's look at the ways we have to correct elevation certificates. In no circumstances should anybody other than the certifier be writing on the form. In some states, it is actually state law that you cannot write on the form. Know your state laws as it pertains to this. But generally speaking, do not write anything on the form to correct it. Permit numbers or file numbers can be written on the form as long as they do not block or confuse any information on the form itself. If you, as the local floodplain administrator, made the correction, the corrected EC should always be submitted back to the certifier and the building owner or developer so that everyone has a correct copy. The building owner should take it to their insurance agent and see if it improves their rating and it serves as a training of sorts for the certifier who initially filled it out incorrectly. If you hand out elevation certificates to homeowners or builders, fill out as much of sections A and B yourself as you can so that at least you know those fields will be correct. This allows the applicant or surveyor to focus on completing the survey information in section C instead of trying to find the correct map information or other items on the form. This has been shown to reduce many of the more common errors we see. FEMA allows a few ways to correct an EC. The four basic options we have are to have the surveyor produce a new form, you can always return the EC to the surveyor or the homeowner developer, show them the mistake that was made, and have them provide a new EC. This is the cleanest and best way to handle mistakes. Another clean way to get a correct EC is to have a surveyor or engineer on your community staff produce an EC themselves. This way you can have more input on how the form is filled out. Or you can hire this out to a local surveyor on contract with the community. In essence, get another qualified individual to create a new EC for the property owner. Let's go through a quick example of when you would have the surveyor resubmit a corrected EC or create a new one in-house. If you have any inaccurate or incomplete information in Section C as it relates to datums and elevations, you see in this situation the surveyor left off the mandatory elevations for bottom floor and the lowest adjacent grade. The best way to handle this is to return it to the surveyor and request a new certificate. If the surveyor made the mistake to begin with, he or she would not be charging the homeowner or builder for another certification, but that's between the surveyor and his or her client. Hopefully the surveyor adds the missing information and provides you with a new EC. Another possibility along these lines of having difficulty getting a surveyor to produce a new corrected form is to have an engineer or surveyor on your community staff produce a new EC. If you have this capability in your community, this might be a much easier option. If the surveyor is going to charge the homeowner developer for a new one, or maybe they are no longer in business or just simply don't want to, you have another option. That option would be to use the Memo of Correction form, which you can get by contacting your ISO CRS specialist or your ISO CRS resource specialist. The official term is Memo of Review for Correctness and Completion, but we generally call it the Memo of Correction for short. 
The local floodplain administrator should be the one to fill out and sign this form. When using the form, you must fill in the address that matched the EC you are correcting, then write in only what you are changing, being sure to fill out all the contact information at the bottom of the form, and being sure to sign and date. Indeed, it's imperative that the floodplain administrator sign and date the form. If the form is not signed and dated, we cannot accept it and therefore the changes won't be made. Notice that you can change C1 on this form as well. Sometimes surveyors submit the form without this marked and sometimes surveyors don't completely understand if it's finished construction or not. So this is on the form for the local official to correct if needed. In addition, you should include comments that explain all changes. Please do this as it is very helpful. You see, in this example, the floodplain administrator explained her changes. The community number was corrected, the map and panel number was corrected, and an explanation that C1 was not marked initially by the surveyor. This memo should be attached to the back of the EC you are correcting and should be given to the surveyor and the homeowner builder developer so that they have a complete and accurate EC which they can give to their insurance agent to get the correct rating. Now, one thing you may be wondering about filling out this form is whether you can fill in A8 or A9. Since these are measurements, shouldn't they be filled out by the certifier of the form? Like we mentioned before, if you can get the surveyor to change the EC and provide corrections in these fields, that's the best option. If they are unwilling or unable to change the form, you can use this option. Based on permitting drawings and plans, you can probably come up with 8A and 8.9, the square footage of the enclosure or attached garage. If not, you can go to the building and measure them yourself. For the number of openings, well, that's easy to determine. Go to the building in question and count them. And while you're there, you can measure them as well. Or again, maybe you have inspection records already from your building inspector that might have this information ready for you. And lastly, are there any engineered flood openings? You may have to consult your permit records or actually talk to the builder so that if the answer is yes, you know exactly what make and model were used so you can attach the engineered opening certificate to the form as well. If you had to attach the engineered opening certificate, this would be something you'd want to mark in the comments. The last way you can correct an EC form is to have the local floodplain administrator use section G to make corrections. Generally speaking, the datums and elevations in section C should only be corrected by the certifier of the document, but in certain circumstances, the floodplain administrator can make changes there too. Section G is where this can be done, so let's take a look at this part of the form. If you have a situation where you have elevation and datum information that has been signed and sealed by a licensed surveyor, engineer, or architect who is authorized by law to certify elevation information, you can take the information in that document and transfer it to section C. This is when you will mark G1 on the form. This can be done either with missing or incorrect elevations, or if the EC the surveyor submitted was on an outdated form. You know the information is good, you just can't accept it on an outdated form. So you attach the old form that the surveyor gave you, and then you fill out all appropriate sections of the new form and attach the outdated form to the new form. You will then make sure you sign and date in section G. One special situation though, if you are the local floodplain administrator and also a licensed surveyor, engineer, or architect, you must sign and seal Section D. Also know that the local floodplain administrator can fill out Sections E and F for a building in an AO zone or an A zone without the BFE determined. If you did this, please mark G2, then sign and date the bottom of Section G. The main thing you can use Section G for, though, when trying to correct an AC is the comment section at the end. If you need to change something other than elevations or datums, instead of crossing it out on the form and writing in the right information, use the comment section here and explain what needs to be changed. Something like, A7 should be 7 instead of 6. Or if the surveyor got a map and panel number wrong, you can explain what the correct entry should have been for B4. Just remember, anytime you write something in section G, it is always best to fill out all the contact information fields and sign and date it. This lets you and any future reviewer know later on who reviewed this and when. All right, now that we've seen the various ways to correct an EC and when you might use each way, let's provide real life situations by looking at our top 10 EC errors and seeing how we would correct each one. The number in the percent ECs column show the percentage of all ECs we looked at in 2019 that showed this error. 
We could try to go through all the errors we see, but that would be tedious and very time consuming, especially since there would be many variables to each based on specific situations. Your decision on which way to correct the ECs may also hinge on how many ECs you have to correct and whether they are all from the same surveyor, etc. Hopefully, by the time we've gone through each of these, you'll have a good understanding of how and why to use the various correction methods you have at your fingertips. Let's start with the most common error we see on ECs, the wrong diagram number. You can usually tell this is wrong by either knowing exactly what type of building is being built or by looking at the elevations in section C and seeing that they don't match with the building diagram given in A7. What I mean by that is if the elevation for C2A, the bottom floor, is below the elevation for C2F, lowest adjacent grade, you know the building is something like a basement or a subgrade crawl space, and you are dealing with either a diagram 2A, 2B, 4, or 9. If the diagram given in A7 is something other than those four possibilities, you know you have a problem. So first, you would confirm the correct diagram number, then figure out which correction method is best and easiest for the situation. You may want to contact the surveyor first to see if they will change it. If not, you can easily change it with either the memo of correction or by providing a comment in section G explaining what the correct building diagram should be. The second most common error is not having the machinery or equipment servicing the building entered. Since this is in section C, the best way to correct this is to have the certifier of the form redo their form. If you can't get them to do that, you could provide that information in section G. But since it's an elevation you're needing here, you'd have to get a licensed surveyor, engineer, or architect that's on staff or hire out one to do this for you. And in order to do that, they would have to provide that elevation in writing to you with it signed and sealed. You as the floodplain administrator would then mark G1 and attach that sealed document to the EC. The next two errors, incorrect community number and wrong map panel numbers are easily fixable. Since these fields are both information retrieved from the firm, using the memo of correction works easily for this. You could also do it by filling out section G and providing the correct information in your comment. The error we list next, address not filled out correctly, usually means the address is missing or it's slightly different from the address on page 1. I'd first see if the certifier can change this on his or her form, and if not, you could write a comment in section G explaining what the correct address is and that the form should have the address at the top of each page. For section C and E elevations not filled out correctly, I'd almost always return it to the surveyor for section C elevations and the property owner for section E, and have him or her redo the form. You could provide your own elevations from an in-house professional or hire a professional to do it, but really try to get the original certifier of the form to make these changes. The incorrect community name is another easy one and can be changed easily with a memo of correction or by making a comment in section G. If you receive an EC that's not marked for finished construction when it's supposed to be, please confirm that it was finished with the surveyor when he or she shot the elevations, but then you can easily use the memo of correction to make this correction. Error number 9 on this list, attached garages not filled out correctly, is something that you should really confer with the surveyor about. It may or may not be an attached garage as defined by FEMA. See our other elevation certificate videos for section A and section C. There may be other floor elevations to consider and it may be confusing as to which one to use. Talk it over with the surveyor and see if he or she can't create a new EC for you to incorporate any changes that need to be made. Remember. Only non-elevated buildings have attached garages. If the building is elevated, a diagram 5, 6, 7, or 8, then A9 and C2D should never be filled in. If you can't use the surveyor to correct the form, you may have to use an in-house surveyor or hire one to shoot new elevations. If all it is is a diagram number or maybe it's really not an attached garage, you should use the memo of correction and show the correct values in A8 and A9 to correct the EC. Please use the comment section to explain what you did. And lastly, we see quite a few certification date errors. These range from not dating the form to using an outdated form. When the latter is the case, remember that you can either get the surveyor to recreate the EC using the current form, or you can attach the outdated form to a new EC, mark G1, and sign and date that section on the new form or current form. This concludes our training on how to correct an EC. Please be sure to watch our other EC training videos that cover what is considered an error for each section of the EC along with our two-part series on general issues to watch out for on ECs. Thanks for watching.